morning and welcome to the online worship service of the New York City Church of Christ. It's great to be with you this morning. It's been a big week for the Star Wars fans out there. On Monday, it was May the 4th. On Tuesday, it was Cinco de Mayo. And today, here we are for Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. It's great to have you with us this morning. We realize for some of us, this may not be an easy day, especially for those who have recently lost their mom. We want you to know that we're remembering you in prayer, and we hope that this worship service can bring you some comfort, some encouragement today. In Colossians chapter 2, in verse 6, the Bible says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. This is... You know, now months we're counting in that we're in this situation, that this uh, challenging time has been going on, and we're trying to figure out how to live life. And this scripture gives us some guidance. You know, it says, For those of you who've received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him. And that's the truth that we need to cling to this morning. Whether it's a good day or a bad day or a time of panic or a time of peace, Jesus is Lord. If you've made that decision, that holds true, and we need to keep living our lives that way as disciples of Jesus. You know, this worship service and our times together are really opportunities to do some of the things it says here in verse 7. It says to be built up in Him. That's what we're going to do this morning, be built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught. And you know, I want to give a special encouragement to any of you who are visiting with us for the first time this morning. And if you maybe don't know a whole lot about Jesus or what the Bible says about how to follow Jesus, we all need to be taught. You know, no one is born a Christian. We, we get taught how to do that, how to be a follower of Jesus. And this morning is a great opportunity for you to either begin your journey being taught and your education on how to do that, uh, or continue on in your education on how to be a Christian. And so we're going to have a great opportunity to do that this morning together. And of course, as we conclude our time together, we're going to take communion and have an incredible uh, time overflowing with thankfulness, as this scripture says, as we remember what Jesus did on the cross for us. Also, if you're visiting with us for the first time, we're excited to have you. We're glad you joined us online. Please connect with us through our social media and also through our website. At this time, let's go before God in a word of prayer as we continue our worship service. Almighty Father in heaven, we come before you thankful for another day to wake up and to worship you. Father, we know that uh, we have many blessings in this life, and while this time may be confusing and difficult and challenging in so many ways, uh, we are grateful for the charge in your word to remain living our lives in you as disciples of Jesus, no matter what the circumstance. And so I pray that this time can be an encouragement to our hearts, a comfort to us, uh, that you would be with those who are uh, remembering moms that have been lost or, or just having a difficult time on this Mother's Day, uh, please just give us the strength and the comfort and the encouragement that we need to continue our walks with you. Father, we love you, and it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fill me, Lord, with your spirit and make me like a leader who has a strong, a strong army. Join. Fill me, Lord, with your spirit and make me like a leader who has a strong, a strong army. Fill me, my Lord. All right, now, brothers, join in with Lord, I pray.
Good morning, church. Uh, we're grateful for this opportunity to be able to share today's contribution message with you. 2 Corinthians 8, starting in verse 1, it reads, And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. And they did not do as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. The churches in Macedonia were made up of the regions of Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea. They were all facing extreme trials, pretty much like what we're facing today as a church. But God's grace was with this church, and it was not without effect because even though they were going through some severe trials, they still wanted to give out of God's grace that was shown to them. You know, Paul said that their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. When you think about it, extreme poverty and rich generosity are two phrases that should not even be in the same sentence. But here is what Paul used to describe this great church. He understood that God's grace did not lighten the Macedonians' afflictions, nor did it remove their deep poverty. But somehow their grace, the grace that God has shown them, inspired them and motivated them to give to others who were in need. You know, God is amazing in how he gives to us in times of trial because God is a giving God. And I had to find myself asking, you know, where, where do I stand with God's grace right now? How do I, how am I responding to God's grace on me and my family? And I look at how Paul commends the Macedonians for their overflowing joy. And right now it may not feel like you're, you're feeling overflowing joy. But well, we have a lot to be grateful for. We have a lot to be thankful for. And God's grace is rich in our lives. And therefore, the Macedonians were inspired to give and to sacrifice, even though they themselves were suffering. You see, it wasn't the quantity of what they gave that blew Paul away. It was the joyful spirit in which they gave it. The scripture says entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with the ability to give. This church was not being coerced to give. They wanted to give. This was something that they really saw as a privilege to be able to help their brothers and sisters and to participate in that giving. I wanna share about two single sisters in the Harlem region who had the same spirit. At the beginning of the COVID crisis, a sister who had lost her source of income was concerned about some of our older members and she reached out and found out one of the sisters needed groceries. And even though she wasn't receiving an income of her own, she took her own money and bought groceries and had them delivered to her home so that she wouldn't have to go out and go grocery shopping. Another sister a week and a half ago reached out to me and asked if there were any families that were in financial need because of COVID. She had decided she was going to donate her entire stimulus check to an individual or family in need within our ministry. Wow. In both of these situations, these sisters did this entirely on their own. And similar to the church in Macedonia, 
they have given themselves first to God. And because of their gratitude and their faith, they're also giving to others. I was so encouraged by their hearts for the saints. And they're not alone. So many of you also have sacrificed and are thinking about how you can meet the needs of others. Amen. You've continued to give your weekly contribution and your poor contribution even through this trial. And I want you to know that it's making a difference. Since January, we've been able to help as a church 11 families with non-COVID related benevolent needs. And we've helped 81 individuals and families within the church to receive food assistance. That has totaled $42,800 in benevolent needs that we've met as a congregation. Additionally, we continue to give to Hope Worldwide. This year, we've already given them $50,000, $10,000 a month to support the work that we do for Hope and for the poor. Please know that your giving is making a difference. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and attention. And now we will have a very special announcement from one of our elders. Thank you, James and Zalika. I'm here this morning to give you some additional good news with regards to benevolence. But first, let me say a big thank you to you for the monetary contributions that you have been making week after week towards providing for the poor and needy. In conversations with our sister churches in the ICOC, in the Caribbean, and in West Africa, we have been told of the dire needs of our brothers and sisters in those regions. The need for food and basic necessities. Like us, they have been ordered to shelter at home. They have no savings and no means of income. They have no ability to purchase food and basic necessity. Last Monday night, the board of directors and elders in consultation with our CFO, Bobby Ritter, uh, had a virtual meeting, at which time we discussed these needs that have been expressed to us. After some discussions among ourselves, we made the decision to donate one hundred thousand dollars from our benevolence fund to meet the needs of our brothers and sisters in these uh, congregations in these regions this money will be given to churches in the caribbean churches in english-speaking west africa churches in French-speaking West Africa, and churches in French-speaking Central Africa. I must say again, thank you, thank you, thank you for making these funds available to meet these critical needs. And I'd like to say on behalf of those churches that are uh, receiving this fund, to say to you, Thank you on their behalf. Let us pray together. Jehovah, God our Father, you alone are God. You are our God. You are steadfast in your grace, mercy, compassion to us. Because you love us so much, you consider us your treasured possession. We know that you hear the cry of the desperate and that you move men's heart to respond to those cries. Thank you for this congregation of your people and for how they have allowed you to work on their hearts to provide for the needs of others. We pray that you will perform a miracle with these funds that we're giving that it will go to meet needs greater than we can even think 
or imagine. Father, we continue to pray for healing of the hearts of those who have lost loved ones, family members, and friends during this time. We pray that they will feel your comfort. We pray also for those who ex are exposed to danger because they are working to save lives and to provide essential services so that the rest of us can shelter at home in safety. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and the new mercies you show us every day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall On behalf of the New York staff and the elders, I want to wish all of you a uh, happy Mother's Day. Moms, I hope that today is a day when you are treated like a queen, that you are being pampered, that your every uh, wish is being granted, that you don't have to lift a finger to cook a meal or wash a dish or, or anything like that, that uh, everyone is at your beck and call and that you will have a day to remember. So we want to honor you, all, all of you moms, uh, for all of your hard work and 
and for the blessing you are from God. We also want to thank all of our first responders and medical professionals for all that you're doing during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. We, we just pray for you and thank God for uh, your efforts to keep all of us safe. We also know that today can be a challenging day as uh, many of us have uh, either have lost personally or know of people who've lost family members. Some have lost their mothers. May God comfort you. Uh, others have lost mothers in past years, and we know that today can be uh, uh, difficult in some ways, and we pray that you can find uh, God's love and God's strength and God's presence in your life. Today we have a, a special message we pray that will encourage all of us. We want to talk about a, a great uh, woman of faith who uh, was a mother, uh, and who is an example, not just to mothers, but to all of us, of how we can uh, walk with God and trust in God and allow him to guide our path. In the great book of, of Hebrews, in Hebrews 11, uh, there are two women of, of, of faith who are mentioned by name. Uh, first of all, uh, Sarah is mentioned, and then later on, Rahab is mentioned by name. But there's a third woman uh, that's uh, in this great hall of fame of faith, but her name is not mentioned. And in Hebrews 11, beginning in verse 23, it says, By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw that he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. And so here, right in the middle of all this, we we read about the, the parents of Moses and how by faith they hid him and they believed that God had a special plan for Moses' life. And in Numbers chapter 26, we learn the, the name of, of, of the mother of Moses. And in Numbers 26 verse 59, it says the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, a descendant of Levi who was born to the Levites in Egypt. To Amram, she bore Aaron, Moses, and their sister Miriam. And so the mother of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam was a woman by the name of, of Jochebed. And we're going to look at her life and her faith today, which I think can inspire all of us. Uh, going back to Exodus chapter 1 and verse 8, uh, we see a transition with God's people after Joseph has passed on. It says in Exodus 1 verse 8, Then a new king who did not know about Joseph came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, The Israelites have become much too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies and fight against us and leave the country. And so this king became insecure about how uh, the Israelite nation was, was prospering and growing. And so he decided, look, I'm going to inflict harsh punishment upon them. And then he took it to another level when he said, I'm going to kill all of uh, the Hebrew baby boys. As they're born, I I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to take them all out. And so we read later, it says, the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, uh, whose names were uh, Shifra and Pua, is when, when you're helping the Hebrew women in childbirth and observe them on the, the delivery stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. And that was the, the, the edict that was put out there. That was what they were told. And they didn't do it. And because they didn't do it, God blessed them. And so we read later in Exodus 1 and verse 20, it says, So God was kind to the, the midwives, and the people increased and became even more, more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. And then Pharaoh, in verse 22, says, gave this order to all his people. Every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile. Let every girl live. Can you imagine the terror of God's people? The overwhelming, just depression or, or struggle, mourning, agony, grieving. 
as Hebrew baby boys are to be thrown into the Nile River. And, and so Amram and Jochebed, they're trying to figure out a way. How do we spare our son's life? What do we do? God, give us an answer. And so we're going to learn that Jochebed shows us how to have faith. She shows us how to have faith with conviction, number one, faith with creativity, and then thirdly, faith with courage. So we're going to talk first of all about Jochebed's faith with conviction. What was the edict? Kill all the Hebrew baby boys. Don't let any of them live. And so Jochebed understood, as I think we need to understand, that whenever we're commanded to do something against God's law, no matter who it comes from, it can come from the government, it can come from authorities, that is a law we do not obey. She took her stand, her husband, they took their stand and said, we will not give in to this law. We will not obey this law. And praise God for the mothers who are willing to take a stand because in our world today, you know, people are, are, are really downplaying the, the Bible. I mean, they're, they're downplaying God. Uh, you know, morality is at an all-time low. And our kids are in, in, in places, in systems where they've got to understand that as godly, God-fearing parents, God-fearing moms, that we're going to take a stand, that we will not submit to the ways of the world, that we will hold to God's standard and to God's law. You know, we're, we're in a world today where there can be no prayer. You can't read the Bible. I mean, and even we're told there's no God, and we've got to have mothers who instill in their children a love for God, a reverence for God, and that's the kind of woman that Jochebed was. And he, in Exodus chapter 2, we're going to see she just wasn't just a woman with conviction, which we all need to have, but she was a woman with a faith, with creativity. In Exodus 2 verse 1, it says, Now a man of the house of the Levi married a Levite woman. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him, coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds, sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the child went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. That woman was Jochebed. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. What a, a miraculous incredible story. Jochebed figure out a way to save her son. Somebody had their thinking cap on here. She most likely understood how the Egyptians viewed the Nile. They thought it had healing powers and maybe could even cure uh, infertility. And so there, Pharaoh's daughter was, was in the Nile a river and, and Jochebed came up with this incredible idea of I'm going to put my baby in a basket and I'm going to put him in the, in the river. And that's what she did. And Pharaoh's uh, daughter saw the baby and the Bible says that Moses was exceedingly beautiful. Her heart went out to, to him and all along Miriam was there watching every move. And then when she said, look, you know, she, she saw that she wanted the baby. She said, should I go get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby? And there it was. It was uh, Moses' mother, Jochebed, who nursed him and got paid to do so. You're talking about ingenious, creativity, a woman who was on her toes. And she continued to put herself in a position to influence her son 
And after uh, he, he was nursed and grew older, then she gave him to Pharaoh's uh, daughter. What a remarkable, insightful way to save your son and to continue to have an impact in his life. You know, we're competing for the attention of our children unlike ever before today. And we want to hold up the creative moms who find a way to keep their kids interested in God, in spiritual things, and to prioritize the right things. You know, we, we, we live in a world where iPads and iPhones and video games and everything you can imagine are trying to steal the attention of our children and to get them to, to focus on any and everything except spiritual things. And a woman who teaches her children to love God, to me, is cooler than anything that the world has to offer. And if you have a mother who tells you, hey, you need to put this thing away and put that gadget away so that we can have some family time, so that we can focus on spiritual things, you need to praise God for your mom because there's no greater love than someone helping you to put first things first. You know, the proverb writer says in Proverbs 31 verse 30, charm is deceptive, beauty is vain, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears God is to be praised. So today we praise the moms who put God first, who teach their children to love the Lord. You know, I praise my wife for loving God with all her heart, mind, soul, and strength, and for my children seeing that conviction in her. And I think every husband should honor their wives and hold up their, their wives and the mothers who are showing by example that there's nothing more important than knowing God and loving God. And doing that in a creative way. Yes, there are a lot of things, a lot of distractions out, out there, but you've got to figure out how do I keep my kids focused on the things that matter most. We can no longer let our children just prioritize sports and education and and, and, and uh, dance recitals and all these things and not see the importance of the Lord God Almighty and his presence in their lives. And we need mothers who creatively figure out, I'm going to get this, this, this has to be at the top of the list, and I'm going to teach my children to love and revere the Lord God Almighty. Uh, and finally, we see that uh, Jochebed was a woman, her faith, she had a faith with courage. I mean, the, the Bible says that she and her husband, they did not fear the king's edict. You know, there, there is a period of time that goes by when uh, 40 years, when we hear nothing about Moses. And we read in Acts 7, verse 22, that Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and offended them by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but he did not. Now here we have Moses who is really having every thing in the world at his disposal. I mean, he is the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He's raised in the Egyptian culture. He's wealthy. I mean, he's got everything going for him. Why? Why risk it all to rescue a Hebrew slave from an Egyptian taskmaster. Why would you do that? I mean, why take a stand for justice? Why defend somebody who has nothing to offer you? What would make you do that? Where did that conviction come from? Where, where have you seen that? Why would you do? Moses, I believe, was influenced by his mom. He was influenced by Jacob, and he understood that even though he was raised by the Egyptians, 
that he was a child of God, that he was a part of the Hebrew nation. Somebody kept that in his heart and his mind. And he also thought that God had delivered him so that he could lead his people to freedom. He wasn't quite ready. He was a little bit ahead of his time. Eventually that would happen. It would take another 40 years. But where did the courage come from? Where, where did the faith come from? Where, where did the conviction come from? It, it, there was something burning in his heart that made him step forward. And I believe here again, Jochebed, a woman of, of faithful courage, had an impact on her son. And I want to encourage the moms today. I want to praise the moms who are not afraid. Who are not afraid to be old school when it comes to morality. Who understand that God's way, the ancient paths are the right way. And that we don't believe in all the sexual promiscuity of the world. And that's not the way we're going to go with our kids or teach our kids. I want to praise God for, for, for the moms who take a stand for their faith. And who are not afraid to be known as, as God-fearing women who stand for something. I want to praise the moms who, who teach their kids the fear of the Lord, who teach character and honesty and integrity over popularity and being known, who hold up Christian virtues and Christian values. It takes courage to do that today. And if you take a stand, your kids, praise God, will be influenced by your conviction. How significant is Jacobed's life? For her son, I believe, through her influence and by the Spirit of Almighty God, rescued a nation. You know, we, we see Moses even in the New Testament. The Bible says on the Mount of Transfiguration, there was Elijah and there was Moses. What an impact his life had. And we see him rescuing the Israelites out of Egypt and God working through him in a powerful way and him becoming uh, the, the friend of God. You know, we, we thank God today for the influence and courage of godly mothers in our fellowship. Your influence, your life, your faith is changing the world because you're influencing the next generation. In John chapter one, as we come to a close here, the Bible says in verse 44, it says, Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. You see, Moses wrote about Jesus. You know, Philip said, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law. And Jesus is, he's the fulfillment of the law. Jesus is the Lamb of God that was slain for the redemption of all mankind. And as we commune together today, we remember his death. And we praise God that the Lamb of God has redeemed us and that we have been set free. And so as we take the bread that represents his body and we take the, the fruit of the vine that represents the blood that was spilled for our sins, past, present, and future, uh, let's, let's pray together and let's thank God for his plan of redemption and let's thank God for the faith of godly women like Jochebed, and even women who are in our fellowship today. Let's pray. Our God and Father, we thank you so much for your incredible grace and mercy for your amazing plan to save all mankind. God, we thank you that you've worked throughout all the, the, the generations uh, to bring us to a, a place of salvation. And Father, as we commune together, uh, we do so with grateful hearts knowing that because of your grace and mercy and your eternal plan, that we can be saved. Thank you for uh, this bread that represents the body of Christ and the fruit of the vine that represents his blood. 
And we pray and thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. service today. We'd love to connect with you at nyccoc.net slash connect or on our social media. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to this channel. And now we'd like to welcome all those who became Christians in the last week. Ross Lippincott with an important announcement from the New York City Church of Christ Youth and Family Ministries about teen camp and preteen young teen camp in 2020. We waited as long as possible, hoping that the situation would change. However, after much prayer and discussion, the staff and the elders of the New York City Church have collectively come to the decision that due to COVID-19 and its effects, we cannot hold our 2020 youth camps in person as previously planned. We have every intention of resuming youth camps in person in 2021, and both campgrounds where we hold camp are looking forward to having us back for teen and preteen young teen camp. While we are disappointed that we cannot meet in person, we are excited to announce that we will still hold virtual camps. While it will look very different from what we normally expect from camp, we are excited to make some new memories together as we try something that we have never done before, we will send out some more information about this in the coming weeks. So just to recap and summarize, we will not be having physical camps in 2020. However, we will still have camp virtually. And an amazing thing on the bright side for parents is that camp will be 100% absolutely free this year. Please keep the Youth and Family Ministry in your prayers and also take some time to reach out to the seniors in your ministries to encourage them as this has been the toughest on them. We love you all and are praying for our entire church family through this time of testing. Thank you again for joining us. Stay tuned for one more song as we close out. See you all next week.
Have a great time in fellowship with one another.